So we're continuing without checking of this exam. Now it's question 11. And we're looking at question part B, factorized completely. X squared minus X is minus 12. Okay, and then we look at this. So the working looks right. You have x minus 4x plus 3. So even though it looks right, it's good to at least check. So when you have a factorizer, it's one obvious check you can do is when you put 4 in, it gives you 0. Okay. So if you look at the original equation, if you put 4 in, you get 16 minus 4 is 12, and 12 minus 12 is 0. So that's good. And x plus 3, if you put minus 3 in, you should get 0. So 9 plus 3 is 12, minus 12 is 0. Okay, so this is going to be right. Two, <clears throat> and still trying to factorize. So you know when you've got four terms, there's a chance you can pair them off. And I think that's what's being done. So you pair off the first one. Now oh, you get a common factor of two out the front. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you pair off the first one with a common factor of x. And then you pair off the second one with a common factor of minus y. I don't know why there's a squared here. This is just, this is just this is a typo. Okay, so it should just be here. And now see, there's a common factor of five plus y. So five plus y times x minus y times two. Okay, you can still check this a little bit at least. Um, you could check y equals negative 5 makes this 0. Um, or maybe it's easier to check x equals y makes this 0. When this is equal, 2y squared cancels with this 2y squared, and then 10x minus 10y is cancelled. So, I mean, it doesn't check it completely, but at least you're checking something. Um, 5 plus y y equals minus 5. Yeah, I suppose you could check it too. That's pretty simple. Yeah, so the x comes out the front and then 10 minus 10 is 0. And here, you take the y out. You get, yeah, it's also 0. So you get 5 plus y. Yeah, that's 0. <laughs> okay, try to factorize this. You can see it's a difference of two cubes. Okay, so that's two x cubed minus three cubed. So you factorize it like this: four x squared plus six x plus nine. Yeah, and of course you can still check something like this is right, at least check something about it. So when x is 3 over 2, it's meant to be equal to 0. And it is, because 3 over 2 is what makes x cubed times 8 equal 27. <coughs> and another way you could check it is, is actually just expand this again. Okay. So it's important to make sure what you're doing is right. Okay, then we look at look at part C. The function is defined by this rule. Evaluate f of minus two plus f of two plus f of five. Okay. So f of minus two, well, what happens when x is minus two? We're in the first case, and the function value is 0. Okay, that's good. f is 1. f of 1. No, this is 2, sorry. Just a, hard to read 2. So, when it's 2, we're in this case. So, x would just output the same thing. So, 2 will output 2. Oh. Yes, okay, so you just wrote x, but x actually is equal to 2. 
F of five or five. Oh, that's very strange. It seems you work out you knew what to do for five, but for two, you didn't do it. Yeah, so when it's greater than equal to two, it's x. So if you put in for five, you get five back. Okay, so this should actually be a two. And the answer should be seven. One more question, part D. Triangle, this is 35, this is 118, and this is 15. Find the length, so the long length, correct to one decimal place. And it is long, because this is a, not, a, not an acute angle. So find that length. Um, so it looks like a sign rule. And that's what is being done. So A over sine A equals B over sine B. So 15 over sine 35 is equal to the unknown side over sine 118. Okay. And yeah, then I, it continues here, which is kind of annoying because you might read this first if you want sure where to start and this wouldn't make as much sense unless you read that first okay so xc i think it was a capital x too so it's being changed to a small x okay and this is just really messy It's very hard to understand what's being written. And you get an answer of 23. Point something. Oh, well, first of all, yeah, it's 23. The, whatever the answer has to, it has to be bigger than 15, okay? Okay, how would you say this? Well, sine 30 is a half. We know that. So sine 35 might be a little bit more than a half. So if it's a little bit more than a half, and dividing it, make it a little bit less than 30. So I guess that's plausible. 26, maybe that's within the realm. And then we times it by a sine of 118. So sine of 118 is going to be very close to sine of 120 which is equal to sine of 1, sine of 60. So sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So if you times this by root 3 over 2, you're meant to get the answer. So you know, root 3 is like 1.7 something. You know, over 2 is something less than 1, yes. So And it's like maybe 0. 0.8 something. So 80% of this is like this minus 5. So like 21, the answer is 23. So, you know, I'm not going to say that's right for sure, but it, it, it does seem plausible. Okay, and, and the working is right. 